Zach Meslani now making his way to the stage. Meslani in the black and white. Six, 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 six. Back fireworks, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's Zach, Zach from 10th Planet Bethlehem. 10th Planet, Be 10th Planet Bethlehem. Veritable dream to the killers. Him and JM yes, holding down the fort at 10th Planet Bethlehem. Great technique. He's, He's a beast. He's yeah. a savage. Excellent coaches, I have to say. Great guys, JM and Zach. That's, that's, a, that's a beautiful... Great guys, JM and Zach. Veritable dream to killers. He's a beast, he's yeah. a savage. It's, it's, it's Zach from 10th Planet Bethlehem. 10th Planet Bethlehem. That's it's 10th Planet Bethlehem. That's it's a beautiful... Great technique, he's... That's, it's a beautiful... It's a 10th Planet Bethlehem. Yo, what up? Zach's Corner Podcast, Volume 20. I, hopefully you guys can hear me. We're using a little blue ball speaker, but uh, I got special guest Joey Hawes here with us today. Hello, everyone. It's actually House, but that's all House. I heard. Joey House. <laughs> Damn it! I feel when like when it's just us, I don't give a shit. Yeah. But. When, uh, dude, I was just gonna bring up. Uh, you know what? I was also gonna bring up. Wait, do you know how to say my last name? Maslani. Ah, that's wrong. It's all right. But it's uh, it's Maslani. Oh. But sure. a lot of people say Maslani. Yeah, that's it, what I thought it was. And then um, a lot of people add another A to it where they're like Mazzalani. Oh. They're always <laughs> saying that too. So that's only when I want people to think that I'm Italian. I'm like Mazzalani. Shit, you're not Italian? Nah, not really. Oh, Actually, you know what? Maybe I am slightly a little bit, but I think it's mostly German um, and a little bit of Irish. And then my ma or my dad's side was from Ukraine. Okay. So Ukrainian. So Damn. maybe a little Russian or Didn't something. Didn't know any of that. That's why I'm super white. But I do get a good tan. So maybe there is some like Italian in me, a little Mediterranean. You, got, like, you definitely have like the, uh, the personality. Like the yo, like that's of an a, Italian guy, that's yeah. a East Coast yeah. Italian guy. Yeah, totally. it's definitely. Well, I grew up. You know what? I grew up in that type of environment where like everybody was like, like uh, my dads and my moms are both super loud. Like my dad, like he yells all the time. Like those, be and I have. I feel like when I yell at the dogs, it's the same way. He'll be like, <laughs> yeah, knock it off or whatever. Like I'll crack your heads, you know, whatever he would say. And then my mom, same thing. Like you go down there, the TV's loud, everybody's screaming at each other, but it's in love. You yeah. Know? Same with like my buddy George. If you go over to his house because he's Greek, they're literally yeah. screaming at each other. And I'm like, what the? F are they yelling at each other? It's like, no, we're just talking. I'm like, oh, what? You know, but they're always all hyped up on each other. But uh, yeah, so that and I was also going to bring up, I had to bring it up at least uh, when when I first met you. So if you guys don't know, Joey is a um, brown belt under John Jock and a bunch of other stuff too, which we'll get into. But uh, that's where I met you first at EBI three, right? Correct. Yeah. So that was probably, dude. I don't even know what year is it right now. It's two thousand nineteen. Uh, was so that like two thousand fourteen, two thousand thirteen? So, yeah, probably. It's a long time. Ago. Yeah, I guess Grace was. So she's sixteen now, and I think she was like twelve when it happened, okay. right? But so yeah. she must be close to seventeen coming up. Four I think or five her birthday's years ago. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty long. Um, it's not really that long, but it is long when, uh, it, like, I guess. How can I explain this? All the stuff that's happened since then makes it seem like it was so long ago, yeah. way longer than it really was. So things are moving so fast and maybe it's just because we're getting older or whatever. But like when you think about like when I started martial arts, I was 16, I'm 35. That's a long time. But like I think about when I met you and when, you know, Grace did her first EBI and I feel like it's just like you're like 31 ages 30, ago. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it was like ages ago. And um, so, yeah, I don't even know how did we actually meet there though like you competed in it i competed in it grace yeah. also competed in it and killed in it yeah. so then that night i i don't know if you already knew eric or what because you ended up staying at our house that night yeah, our yeah, apartment yeah. maybe someone was like hey i know where you guys can stay <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah. there was also a time that we all went out as a group i was after training at 10 planet hq and i think this was actually before okay yeah we uh before that 10 planet so like, we all hung out I think we were all blue belts. Yeah, my and uh, yeah, and I think yeah. that's where we met. Okay, and I yeah, think yeah. that you may have talked to Eric or something like that at EBI three, kind of like a reconnecting yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And then you ended up staying at our apartment, and that's really when we've uh, yeah kind of started connecting. Yeah, yeah. Me and uh, JM like that. We had to do like Grace and her mom. Obviously, you know she is. Uh, you know, a dad and all this stuff too. So like they got a family and they got a bunch of kids and you know, they're doing pretty good. But like me and JM were broke as fuck. We were super broke at the time. And, uh, we had to raise, we raised money for our flights. And we also did a, a donation thing for Grace and her flight and stuff. Oh. And her and her mom stayed 
at a hotels and we were Fancy. staying at a hotel, <laughs> but we were just kind of sleeping at my buddy Sean's place. Uh, shout out to Sean Green. Um, if you guys are into sports, listen to the uh, sports gambling podcast. And I think if you use the code S, I'm always plugging stuff. <laughs> if you use the code SGP, you get. So those of you degenerate gambler, sports gambling podcast. And I, I think you just go there and then eventually maybe it's my bookie. They use the code SGP. You can bet on the fight. So I know there's a lot of people that watch, that uh, listen to this, watch the fights. So check that out. But Sean, he moved out to California. I think I've told this story on the podcast before, but he moved out to Cali to um, be a stand-up comedian. That's how I ended up getting in to go to Cali to meet Eddie Bravo to you know do that whole thing and to eventually meet you guys. But uh, yeah, we were just staying at his pla- his place on like these beat couches okay. and like a shitty ass thing, and we we're just like shit. Where are we gonna stay tonight? And I think yeah, maybe it was Eric was like, dude, you guys can stay at our place. I'm like, oh, all right, you know, we could hang out for a night at a random yeah. spot. Like I think all of our stuff was just. Me and JM were living out of the back of Mary Jo's rental car. Okay. Right? Nice. <laughs> we just had our stuff in the back of the car and we'd go back and forth. And then, yeah. And then, um, and then after that, you guys started the, uh, yeah. so wait, what were you purple belt when you competed in EBI? I was a purple belt when I competed. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Both, uh, the first and the third. Uh, so yeah, at that event, I was a purple Dude, belt. Dude, you were in the first EBI. That's crazy. That's that crazy. is crazy. Life is, uh. Life's crazy how it just kind of works in certain things that you're like, yeah. I was, the thing is like before I even competed in EBI, I didn't even compete that often in jujitsu. Like I'd done a couple of grappling acts. I think Damn. I had gone to like, <laughs> I think I went to worlds as a blue belt, but like I didn't really, like, competing in jujitsu was never like any kind of real priority for me. But because Eddie was at John Jocks all the time for Metamoris, like, you know, me and Eric and a couple of other guys were in his training camp. Yeah, yeah. And, like, Eric was actually his, like, pri- like primary uh, training partner, like, when he was at John Jocks. Nice. And so... I love Eric. During, like, that whole EBI thing, he obviously had, I think, the first weight class was 145. And so, like, that fit Eric perfectly, and they were going to do, like, 170. And I remember Eddie hit me up. was like, hey, do you think you can make 170? I was like, 195 at the time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think I can do, yeah, I can do it. Let's do it. And so – Yeah, didn't Eric face Jeff Glover in one of those? Yeah, right? he won, his first match was against uh, uh, Alexis – Al Dunson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah who's a solid black yeah. belt. Uh, and then, yeah, his next match was against Jeff Glover. And then mine was against Lance Glynn, solid black belt in Paragon. It's actually a really fun match. I can't and remember then, that one. I remember the stage and stuff, and I remember it being on late at night because I was like, I think I was laying in, um, laying in bed with my girl and just like looking at the Twitter updates. Yeah, because there was no live. Feed. It was it yeah. was like it was the poor man's <clears throat> Metamorphosis at that yeah. time because Metamorphosis was like the big show, and then Eddie had obviously just competed in the Metamorphosis thing, and like yeah, it was like it was essentially that's what it was. It was just like a ragtag. We just put together a stage and chairs. Yeah, we didn't like, even know. It was that. in a nightclub. Yeah, it was just yeah. gonna, like, well, I mean, they're still in nightclubs from time to time, but it was just this event <clears throat> in a nightclub. Yeah, East Coast, we didn't even know about it. We didn't mm. even know it was going to go down. I know he, you know, he was, the thing is like when I was, before I was even in 10th Planet, when I, I competed in a, a sub-only tournament that he had at a, a Rochester uh, training camp, and it was just set, there were eight dudes, seven guys were in it, one dude fell out, and I just happened to be there and be oh. that weight. And I was, he's like, I'll give you two pounds if you make it. And I made it. It was like 155. And then I won two matches, lost the third one. And I remember him being like, yo, we're going to like tell him the like, crowd, like of all the people, there were probably like a hundred some people there. And he was like, dude, like we're going to, I'm working on a sub only event. You know, he didn't know what it was called, like, or anything like that. But yeah, you know, him and Master Vic, I'm sure we're like coming up with shit. Like, how can we, as before, that started a whole chain of, oh, look at all this shit that's happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, the whole point of that story was, that's where I met you, but John, John remember the guy, uh, The uh, we, we talk about this all the time, actually, the guy who, the announcer, that old ass announcer John, guy. John Jock Machotomy. Yeah, he messed up a whole <laughs> bunch of shit. Like, he said the Machotomy. So guys will still say that at our school. Hell yeah. They'd be like, you guys shouldn't have the Machotomy when you go out there? <laughs> Ross the boss says that all the time. Uh, that guy messed up a lot of stuff too. Well, Didn't mess I'm up around, your name too, right? Yeah, yeah. Whenever he said I'm it like how you, I said yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I'm around you, though, like we talk about him. Yeah, John Jack Machotomy. Yeah, yeah. Machotomy. Dude, that guy was horrible, man. They, <laughs> you know, they they always. Uh, that's one thing I will like. Um, Jiu Jitsu shows out there. Get your shit together with the announcers and stuff, man. Yeah, you gotta like, get Bruce Buffer. Yeah, yes. dude. Yeah, they had Bruce Buffer. It was dope because like even the even the commentators sometimes. I'm gonna name names, but one time a guy said. Um, what about that matchup that happened before with uh, 
uh, Keenan Cornelian versus Ryan Gordon. And I was like, oh my God, dude. Keenan Cornelian sounds <laughs> like a fired. fucking alien. And Gordon, or Ryan Gordon, that's not even his name, dude. It's disrespectful. He's like the best guy. Yeah. Actually, you know what I mean? actually, you literally know somebody named Ryan Gordon. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's who he knows too. And he just fucked it up. But the other one, no excuse. Keenan Cornelian, that sounds like some type of uh, um, alien or something like that. But, um, yeah, so anyways, get thanks. your shit together. Yeah, seriously, get your shit together. But thank you for coming, and uh, you're here because uh, you're here this weekend, anyways, because um, you got into the Wim Hof method. Yeah, and um, you're doing a whole bunch of shit, which uh, him and uh, Cat were just having a uh, you know a lot of good conversations and stuff. And uh, you, you're very motivating, and um, I know you've been going around and learning from Tony Robbins and all that stuff. And I gotta say, like, there's people out there that I see that hate on motivational people. It's like, don't yeah. be another one of those Instagram motivational guys. Be like, I don't understand why that's a fucking bad thing. Yeah. Why is that a bad thing? Like, what are you depressed eating Cheetos on your couch, or you're just hating on another guy for no reason? Like, I don't understand why yeah. that would be a a bad thing, you know? And it's also like there's a difference between like you're just trying to give like motivational stuff on your social media, but you're not doing anything. Right, in life. exactly. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I, like I've, yeah. I've learned so many awesome tools that have helped me as far as being like healthier, happier, yeah. stronger. And like I look at all these things in personal development, kind of from a, a martial arts point of view, because of within jujitsu, we see it all the time of these guys that maybe don't have like really a lot of physical gifts. But you can learn techniques, and all of a sudden you're yeah. submitting guys that are bigger, faster, stronger than you. And like in personal development, it's all the same stuff. Like you get to learn techniques to live your life a better way. If you're not making enough money, there are techniques that you can yeah. learn. Why would that be a bad thing? Yourself. Why yeah. would that be a bad thing? I don't understand. But even like with happiness and everything like that, there are. It's not just like oh, like just look on the bright side of things. There are tools that you can use, which is why I definitely gravitated towards the Wim Hof method yeah. uh, because it provides you tools as far as dealing with anxiety and just being happier in general. It's the breath work and how it makes you feel. And also the, uh, doing the ice bath. It's a difficult thing to do, but you know, as soon as you do it, you feel great because of what it takes just to get in there, get in there yeah. and then to stay in there. And on top of it, it's doing all these amazing things for you as far as health goes and lowering inflammation. But it is like, I look at the ice bath the same way that kind of Tony Robbins has a fire walk is that it's this big, scary thing. No matter who you are, whether you're looking at the hot coals or you're looking at the ice bath, it is scary for anyone, whether you're an MMA fighter or you're just like a mom who like, takes your kids to school and like, has no spiritual practice, no martial arts background, anything. It's scary for everyone, yeah. yet those same two people can both do it. And oftentimes I've seen like strong MMA fighters. There's actually a video of a uh, crow cop Hopefully, Krokop's not listening right oh, sure, now. Yeah. Uh, but of like his team trying to get him into an ice bath, and he's like, he's crying. He doesn't want to get in there. He's crying. They have to like that. force him in there. And like we know that's a tough dude. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, like, here's an element that he doesn't want to deal with. Where I've seen, I've seen 80 year old women get into an yeah, ice right, bath. Writing this down, that Krokop does not like the cold. <laughs> yeah. so Mr. Mr. Freeze's ass for yeah. fight him. But it's it's you know, they're powerful tools as far as. You know, just learning different techniques to deal with the day in a different way. Yeah, I think that's probably big too for especially nowadays where like, um, you know, a lot of people are just dealing with depression and yeah. anxiety and, and all these different things. And I'm not going to lie, like I don't mean to be inconsiderate or like rude to anyone, but I just, you know, I, I've never understood it, obviously, because I, I probably never had to deal with. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm sure I've been depressed. But I don't know, like maybe it's the way I was brought up or like the way my dad would talk to me all the time and say like, fuck it, you know, or just whatever. You, yeah. like, you got to just keep going. You can't stop. You just got to do it. Maybe you like got me as a kid to believe like even when bad things happen, like that that doesn't mean that I don't, you know, get upset about things or I don't cry about shit or, or try to work on myself or fix it. it just would mean that like, you know, I'm not going to just you know, God forbid, commit suicide, which yeah. I know a ton of people who have committed suicide yeah. that I went to high school with that I know personally that, um, you know, family members of mine and stuff. And uh, it's it's like a debilitating thing. So I'm not trying to be like, 
you know, over, like, like I said, inconsiderate towards like that type of thing. And like, you know, I know a lot of people who have, who straight up is like me being a martial arts instructor who have come to me and said like, oh, I, I just lack motivation or I'm just depressed or, you know, when I look at their life and I'm like, damn, they, they got it. I feel like they got it better than me. You know yeah. what I mean? But really they don't though. It's so it's kind internal. of like a weird thing. Yeah. yeah. And like the way I see it is that there's the, like on the extremes, as far as dealing with these things, as you said, there's the. Like one way is how you were brought up and the people like, well, just suck it up. We all yeah. have feelings. Just suck it up. Keep moving. And then like the other end of the extreme is like people that are just feeling a little down. Like they're immediately – somebody's prescribing them something. something yeah. And it's like the way I see the middle ground is that a lot of us do deal with things like anxiety, depression or whatever it is that's just mentally going on for a lot of people, especially if you feel it in a big way. It could be a thing that is debil debilitating because it kind of – makes this essentially it's a positive feedback loop where you feel shitty so you're you kind of start isolating yourself and now you're feeling shittier because you've isolated yourself and it just cascades and gets worse and worse but there are the middle ground i see is like there's techniques in dealing with it yeah nice and for me meditation has been a big mm -hmm. one uh jujitsu for a lot of people i know it's been phenomenal for myself included uh breath work and just going to different events and everything there so there are different tools that you can use to recognize, okay, a lot of us do have these different feelings inside of us. And sometimes it is, okay, maybe I need to change things in my life. Maybe I'm around people who are negative. Maybe I'm in a relationship that's not fulfilling, or maybe like, you know, I'm not speaking my mind to someone in a certain way. But a lot of times it's also like just plain and simple, your physiology, like, oh, like you've been at your desk all day yeah. slouching. True, so you've been yeah. breathing shitty. And because mm -hmm. of your stressed you've been eating shitty food and because you're stressed you're not sleeping and so all these things now just add on to it more and more where like as i said meditation breath work doing these different things provide these amazing tools to combat these feelings and you do these things you feel better and then it gives you this opportunity to take a step back and slow down things that are going on in your life and go okay i'm feeling this way let me take 10 minutes to do some breathing, to meditate. Let me just slow this yeah, down. Whatever. What can I do right now to change this <clears> feeling? <throat> well, like I'm, I haven't said like this. My dad's been saying this thing. My girl's been saying this thing, whatever. Like maybe I'll just like hit him up and be like, I, you know, just say something about yeah. it. Get it off your chest because there's such like a combination of things that people deal with. And just to have different tools, uh, it's important. Yeah. And definitely be able to do something about it, you know, because I feel like a lot of people just don't know where to go. Like, yeah. they just feel kind of lost or maybe they don't have any friends. Like, maybe that's where jiu-jitsu helps them or whatever. Totally. Or uh, for sure, um, you know, their job. Like, job and money is always a huge stressor for people because that's what I hear from people when they're stressed out. Like, oh, I'm fucking broke or yeah. whatever. It's just like you know, uh, a negative feeling, you know, Yeah. because uh, you feel like, oh, shit. Like, and I've been there where, like, you know – it's weird. Like I never, I always cared about paying my bills, obviously, you know, but some people will just go nuts if they didn't pay, pay a bill. But when I first, I was in a negative loop. I will say that like before, you know, past relationship, uh, job, uh, friends, you know, still a lot of my friends are still my friends, but like just the, even just the way we were like the way we were acting, like going out and drinking, you know, being a single dude, like acting like a, an idiot, uh, you know, hating my job, hating the people at my job, not being able to do the things I want to do, not being able to use those tools, even yeah. though I, I, it's an excuse, but I feel like I, at the time I was making that excuse where I can't just do what I want. I can't do this. I can't do that. You know, so why even try or whatever the fuck I'll just go drinking, you know? Yeah. So, um, but what happened was for me is like when I finally decided like, uh, you know, I was watching fight club and shit like that, <laughs> and like just you know, quoting shit. And I, I see, you know, what's funny is on Facebook and Instagram, I see when people are at the exact spot that I was yeah, at totally. that time by what they're posting on social media. I'll see someone put up that Fight Club one where it says like, it's only when you've lost everything are you free to do anything. Yeah. And I would, I would literally say that to myself and be like, dude, literally, like I don't have, I'm not in a relationship I was. I don't own my house anymore. I kind of, you know, I have a shittier car than I used to to save money. And um, I'm a, my job laid me off. So I'm working part-time at this job, part-time at my other job. I have more free time, but I'm just trying to look for money or in my free time, just worried about everything. And then finally, once I quit that shit and like we really went 100% on the school, I was like, yeah, you're right. I don't have all these things 
like that I thought in my mind were holding me back, even yeah. though they really weren't, but subconsciously they were. Once I quit that job, it freed a whole bunch of stuff off me. Now, granted, not everybody can do that. People have kids, houses, mortgages, whole sure. I just said, screw it. I didn't pay my old bills. I didn't pay my uh, student loans. I didn't pay my, you know what I mean? I just didn't pay it. Yeah. And they were just like, people would call me and be like, yo, you owe us $1,300. I'd be like, uh, don't got it. You know what I mean? And like the way our business was set up, we weren't really making money. So it's not like they could take it from me anyway. Plus sure. I didn't owe like a million dollars, but it's crazy how after I did that, like that job was such a stressor to me that it just, it, it was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I slept for like two days straight uh -huh. or I just slept. You know what I mean? And I just stayed in bed and I didn't do anything. And yeah. then I got up and I was like, all right, now I got to figure out what to do. But like, I felt like, man, all those things, like I see people in that now, you're just in a negative loop where you yeah. feel like you can't get out. But I feel like you definitely can. And maybe with those those tools, like those things that I didn't know about, like uh, I just I just thought that the tools to um, getting out of a negative loop was doing more negative sucking stuff. Up, yeah. yeah. Either just sucking it up and doing it, which sometimes doesn't work because you still have a bad attitude. Yeah. Or um, I just thought that it was like drinking or like going out and, and, and uh, you know, being – mischievous and like yeah. doing stupid shit you know what i mean that's yeah. how i thought like yeah i'm gonna show them i'm gonna let go by getting fucked up tonight or whatever uh -huh. you know and uh you start hanging out with the wrong type of people you're staying up later you, you know and you're just not it just wasn't positive yeah you know what i mean until like i said quit that shit all of a sudden now i'm like in a situation where i felt like i could really start looking into and i feel that is a definite soci uh, problem in our society where people you know, have to, they get in these loops and they can't get out. But I, I just felt like I could start looking into meditation. I could look yeah. in to positive thought, you know, what does that do for people? Like, why is that a thing? Like, is this some just, you know, freaking, you know, fruitcake dude walking around going, I'm always happy. <laughs> yeah. And you just want to be like, no, I'm going to punch this fucker in the face. You know, like, you ain't always happy, bitch, yeah. get on my level. But instead you're not, it's not like that though. It's, it's totally different. It's because you, know? you attract different people yeah. in your life and where I feel that, when you are in that place of just like upset all the time, like that's what you're finding is other people upset all the time. And that's why like you're like people Conflict. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they're like always searching for. And so, but it is different when you change that like perspective. And I do think that there are, cause we are constantly dealing with different things of biofeedback. And like one thing is like, they've done this, this study where if you like put a smile on your face for like seven seconds or something like that, Tells your brain, oh, like we're happy about something. Your brain releases endorphins, making oh, you nice. feel happier. I didn't know that. And they've also yeah. done other science. Yeah, they've <laughs> also done other studies where like they do it's like power poses. Like if you're in the shower and you do like the Superman or Wonder Woman pose, like bringing your shoulders back, it produces hormones that make you feel more confident yeah. and less stressed. And so much of life, I do feel, is like that in a sense, like biofeedback, where you have this internal element and the external element. And so it's like you've got to change one or the other. And by changing one, it helps change the other. Where if you don't like your circumstances, like, okay, well, there's two things you can do. You can change how you look at the circumstance. And I was telling a story earlier about how uh, I had this job that I like, I hated. I was a bartender at a place. Oh, yeah, we that, want to hear a story. That I was, uh, like, I was treated like shit all the time. And there was this one point where I had to take a piss. And so I was gone for like 30 seconds. And when I came back, one of the waitresses, like she was just, she wanted to coke and like could have done it herself, but like wanted to be, be a shit about it. Told the manager and the manager was like, all right, I got to write you up now. Uh, like, it was also yeah. like, like a cranky old lady. And so she's writing like, I'm listen, like I get to take a piss. No one was at the bar. Like I have every right to do this. I'm not signing this, like this write up. And like, you know, I, she was like, all right, we'll tell the boss, whatever. So the next day I come in like ready to quit in a dramatic way. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? No, like I'm going to actually just be so positive that like I'm going to show her that she has no affection. She needed dick. Yeah. And so at first it was like faked and forced where I was like, hey, like I was just like throwing it out there. But like I decided I'm going to be happy and I'm going to be positive. And at some point, like the me faking it disappeared and it was real where I like faked it so much that it just became normal. And this was like within the period of the day, probably within like an hour or two of being there. Of, I'm just going to fake being so positive until like I really was that positive. And I started to recognize it changed like everyone who was like a regular at the bar and who had always been there every day to come in. They're all sad and depressed. Yes, yeah. Like my energy like shifted them where I'm now seeing, wow, by changing this internal thing within myself, 
these people that are always downtrodden are all now like upbeat and they're talking to each other nice. differently. <laughs> and then I saw there was a woman at the bar who wasn't a regular and like I can tell that she was upset about something. Every instinct in my body just – I looked at her and I knew she was upset. And like the old me from like bef anything before that day would have looked at her and been like, okay, like I don't want to get caught up in that. So I would have been, okay, well, if you need anything, let me know. And I would have stepped away. But because I was in this place of like, fuck it, like I'm going to be so positive today, like I stepped into that bubble. I was like, hey, like what's up? And like we just started talking and we really connected. And like, you know, I was just like, you know, we were talking about things and she told me about how like her kids weren't talking to her anymore and she was really Damn, getting into yeah. it. And we connected <laughs> so deep that as we're talking, like she starts crying and like I even start crying. That's when you know like you've oh, connected yeah, yeah. to someone, like you're experiencing their emotions from like their level. And I remember she even like asked, like, like, what are you doing here? Like, what's your whole thing? And I explained how like I was obsessed with jujitsu. I think I had just recently actually competed in EBI. Oh, nice. We had also recently done like our jujitsu in the park event. So I'm like showing her all this stuff, all pumped about it. And I remember we exchanged phone numbers. And then afterwards, as I go home, like as I'm driving home, I get a call and it's from her. And like, you know, we talk for a little bit and she says, listen, I wasn't hundred percent honest with you while we were in the restaurant I actually worked for 2020 oh, and we're shit. doing, uh, we're but, doing the, my podcast listeners know that I'm a huge 2020 fan <laughs> yeah. oh, uh, but like I work for 2020 we're doing a piece on bartenders that shouldn't be bartending that should oh, be nice. living yeah. their passion and she's like I think you'd be perfect for it and then at the very end of the call she says from this point on your life will never be the same and so like, long story short with these things that like, just the whole 2020 interview never came to fruition or anything like that but a what I recognized is by shifting a, like a state and being in a certain place and acting from that place, it opens up an opportunity that was not there. That, yeah. yeah, that would not have been there if I was how I always was. But just like recognizing that every day, everywhere you're around, you're surrounded by people, and within every single person is an opportunity for something. And That's all huge. it takes is to just be this version of yourself. That somebody recognizes like, oh, like that's an authentic thing I want to be around. Hey, I work for so-and-so or I do this. I think you'd fit in well with that. Yeah, like, that's, that's huge really too. What it is. It, yeah, I mean, dude, like after that, I'm sure you probably in your head were like, oh, yeah, I shouldn't be bartending. And I it, should be it, fucking it, doing What's crazy about the whole thing and like how we were talking before, it was almost like a part of me feels like that whole thing was almost as if she was like a messenger from yeah, God. Yeah. Thing. Because even though the 2020 interview didn't happen, like that's not even important to me. The fact that, A, I had that huge recognition and, like, literally my life wasn't the same from that point on where a short while later I quit that job. That's when we started the LA Jiu-Jitsu nice. Club. Nice. And it was like I started living my life in a different way. And so, like, that's like – as I said, you can change things from an internal place where you can literally change the channel within you and all of a sudden you're starting to get different results. Hmm. Or you can change things from an external place of, like, you know, like, this job doesn't make me happy – like, I really love doing this. Maybe I'll quit this and, uh, like, you know, I love jujitsu. Maybe I'll start teaching jujitsu. Or, like, with me with the Wim Hof method, it's a thing that I love doing. And I even just started teaching it before I was even doing, a certified yeah, instructor certified, yeah. because I love doing it. And every time I got ice, it was, like, to get other people to do it. It forced me to do to the do practice it, yeah. more. And it was just more fun to share it with more people. Nice. I and, think that's huge for people, man. If you, if you, like, hear that, that's a crazy story that, like – yeah, you can learn from that. That's huge. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people are just afraid to take that step or whatever. But sometimes, yeah, maybe you could – and that's even even thinking about it more. You could be that person who just pushes someone else to make a, a choice. Like yeah. you could be like, hey, man, you're pretty yeah. good at that. Or if you just say the right thing like, or if you say the wrong thing, you could really you know, uh, you know, know, push someone in the wrong direction too. Like that's why it's, I think it's really cool mm -hmm. about the being positive stuff. Like it's not just being positive. It's like actually – you know, it's not corny. It's changing. It could change it's your little, life little or things. people's lives. Yeah. There, there's actually another story I have that's actually related to that same bar and everything. I think this was only like a couple weeks prior. Uh, so it was like all almost like everything kind of happening in this one kind of time period. And it was I was at that same bar and somebody wanted a drink and like they asked for a specific kind of sweet vermouth. Like an ingredient that no one gives a yeah. shit about. And like he was like adamant about getting this vermouth. And I was like, well, we don't have it. And it was, I remember I was like two minutes from my shift being done. And he tells the manager and the manager goes like, hey, Joe, you need to go to the grocery store and get that <laughs> vermouth. 
And I remember I was just like pissed. I was like, I'm getting out of here. It's four vermouth. And like I walked to the grocery store just like all like, you know, feeling sorry for myself, being pissed about this stupid situation, like getting the vermouth, grabbing it all angry, just waiting in line <laughs> with like a stupid yeah. look on my face. And I remember the guy at the register, I can tell immediately that he, I don't even think he was like a manager of that store. I think he was like like a, like a regional manager kind of guy. He was like, he was dressed nice. He carried himself differently. Every person in the line, he had like an interaction yeah, yeah. with. Like, I'm like, okay, this isn't just like you're like, you know, guy at the teller. There, yeah. yeah. And so like then like I get up to the register to get my bottle of sweet vermouth that I'm all pissed about getting. And he goes like, hey man, like how's it going? And I go, you know what? It's just one of those days. And he got real serious real quick. He goes, you make the day. The day doesn't make you. <laughs> and I remember like it hit me. It hit me in a way that I was like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. That like I grabbed the vermouth and like I walked back to like the restaurant in a different, different place, yeah, yeah. in a different state. And honestly within – like, cause that happened. And then shortly after that other situation happened, I came back to that grocery store like a few months later when I didn't work at that, at the bar anymore. And I was like, Hey man, I want to just let you know. He that, was still there. That, yeah. He was still there. Uh -huh. I was like, I want to let you know, you said this to me and like, it had a real impact on me. And like, I can see it in his face that it meant something. Even like the girl that was like at the teller, like next to him. And she went, Oh shit. Like you really are changing lives. <laughs> And he just like a, you, you can be just a yeah. dude at the grocery store doing your thing, but like you can spread positivity and you can change somebody's perspective that puts them on a trajectory towards yeah, that's a more huge. positive Yeah, You don't life. know. You don't know. And it's it just what? Just by saying shit from your mouth, which yeah. didn't cost anything. You it know cost I mean? nothing. Yeah. I feel like I do that for a lot of people like that I, uh, you know, that, that either confide in me or hit me up and they're like, you know, down about something. I feel like I'm just like, a, I feel like I'm like a, I'm not a motivational guy. I call myself a hype man. Yeah. I'm more of like a hype man. Like I'm like, a, you know, the dude Jay-Z would bring on, on yeah. tour with him. Like, yo, throw Zach out there first. He'll just hype people up. And that, that I like doing that. Like when people hit me up and I'm just like, dude, listen, if I can do this shit, like I don't even know what I'm talking about sometimes. Like, you know, we call it finishers enterprises and everything. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, we could fucking, you know, who knows? We could do this and we could do that. And then all of a sudden I start believing it because we did actually do yeah. some of this stuff like next week we're going to japan you uh -huh. know what i mean like uh, i can't even believe it you know so like I i'm just so grateful for all this stuff and now i want to like help give back to other people that's one of the reasons why i like teaching jujitsu so much and teaching the kids and stuff because you know and i never try to say negative shit to the kids too like i always try to pump them up and even if they're doing bad i'm like you guys are getting it you know what i mean yeah. i just keep i'm hard on them but not like you know like i'm trying to push them in a positive way so that way they do go out and you know they they are more positive you know that's cool i i don't I, I just like i said the whole thing i brought up was like people are acting like it's don't be one of those guys like dude you're something's up with you yeah if you think that it's a bad thing for people to get in better moods and the better mood you're in, the, the more you feel good, the more good things you do, the more um, things you can accomplish too. Yeah. Like, you're it's pissed. like, don't be one of those guys. That's just like, wow, like that thing that yeah. don't, you don't be one of those yeah, guys. Exactly. Because of, the reality is that so many things in life are so much more possible than people give it credit for as what you just think it's positive thinking. No, I like, I believe in possibilities though. And yeah. so many people are just stuck in their, their routine of life and they're just unhappy with whatever that may be. It's like not recognizing that at any given moment you can be, I quit or, Hey, I want that job. Like this is why you should hire me yeah, or, yeah. Hey, this relationship isn't working or, Hey, I want to be in a relationship with you. You can change your life in any given way at any given moment, but it just requires the, you know what? Like I want this. I believe I deserve this and I believe it's possible. Yeah. You got to do it. You got to do it, dude. So if you're listening to this, do it now, whatever it is you're thinking about, just, but the only thing I will say is make smart decisions. Don't do what I did and just bail on your, I mean, maybe, maybe you do, you know what I mean? But try to like, you know, make, make it so that you don't have to explode your life to make these decisions. Like make them smart gradually over time, you know, calculated risks and uh, work your way up. But yeah, I think anyone could do you, literally like the world, especially living in like the, living in America, dude, yeah. the United States. Jeez, you could fucking, you know what well, I mean? I'd actually caveat with what you said, because if I do think there is like with making like big changes and stuff, like I feel that if you look at going from like a caterpillar to like a butterfly, you have that in between cocoon yeah, yeah. stage where like when a but like when a caterpillar goes into the cocoon, it actually fucking like it melts. It has to completely dissolve what it is to become what it wants to be. 
And like sometimes that in life when you do kind of choose to go a specific route, you will start seeing that as you make changes that certain friendships may not fit anymore, certain careers may not fit anymore. And sometimes you do need to make the drastic change of like, okay, I want to get out of here. Now, it's always, especially with jobs and money situations, it's important to be like, okay, like I'm making the choice to get out of this job. Now, like I just got to take the proper steps. Yeah, yeah. Don't screw over your family yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever, you know, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, but like sometimes true, yeah. like, it, it, you will notice there are times where while making these drastic changes, it feels like your life is falling apart because of we get so... Like we get so consumed by our habits and our routines that anything to change that, oh God, it's going to yeah. feel like your life is falling yeah. apart because of you're losing so much of what you feel is been has been consistent for such a long time. Yeah, I mean, dude, I used to go to work every day, seven thirty to five, and then work nights and then work weekends. Now I don't work at all. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's a huge change, and like looking back on it, like now, like I said, it hasn't been that long since I haven't had a full time job like working for the man. But when I look back at it now, like what I used to even wear and the construction and what I used to do, like, dude, I can't even, I, I was a completely different person. You know, I really was. I'm, I'm not like, I, I'm the same, but I'm not. Yeah. Like now the way I view myself and my self-worth and like how I, uh, you know, how I just, how I think of myself is, is, I thought back in the day, I just thought I was a piece of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Like sometimes I... You know, like I still get down on myself a little bit, but I recognize it at least before I was just like, ah, whatever, dude, it doesn't matter. I'm a, you know what I mean? Like I heard Chris Delia talking about that. Like, I like people who smoke cigarettes or like still do like really, really bad stuff for the body. Like we were talking about it too. You know, there are certain things, coffee, you know, maybe you smoke weed, maybe you have a couple of beers, maybe, you know, but like things that are not ridiculous. Like yeah. people who smoke weed be like, well, I'm going to die anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Not really, though. You yeah. know what I mean? You will, but you're not going to, you know, so like... You're not making the process happen quicker by yeah. doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like I, I just thought back then, though, like when stuff like that, it was similar to that. Like I always just thought that I was like, uh, you know, I didn't really have like a, a high viewpoint of myself. So mm -hmm. I didn't feel like what could I even... But now the way I look at myself, I, I, I don't feel like I could... And believe me, I could go back if I had to, but it just seems so far yeah. away from... You know, because like even afterwards, like even a year or two afterwards, people come up and be like, yo, let's go. Let's uh, I'll bring over a case of beer. Uh -huh. And I'm like, for what? Yeah. You know, like we were talking about, I don't watch football anymore, really. I don't really care. And people are just baffled that I don't watch the games. And look, if you watch the game, that's fine. That's your thing. But like I'm so into jiu-jitsu, I would rather be working on responding to emails yeah. than I would be sitting around watching the game. Yeah. I'd rather be taking a walk with my dogs and my wife than, you know what I mean? Like I'd rather, I honestly, I'd rather go, and this seems corny too or sounds stupid, but I'd rather go shopping with my wife than watch the game. Yeah. Like two people are going to be like, Zach, it's such a fuck. And I'm like, dude, you can say whatever you want. It's more fun for me to go to the store than it is to just sit and watch the football and the, and the, uh, whatchamacallit, I don't know the players anymore. And then the, the, the ads are all for stupid shit. Yeah. And it's just, it's not me anymore. I don't care. Well, cause you know what I mean? It's like, it's, uh, I mean, it's. Not everything is like escapism for everybody. Sometimes it's like, yo, like I just want to watch the game and like it's not a yeah, big deal. Yeah, yeah. But for some, a lot of people, a lot of these things like, you know, going to the bar every weekend, yeah. it is a form of like escapism. They have jobs they don't like. And a lot of it is like they have internal shit that they don't want to look at. So they, they're mad at the world. They talk shit about everything that's going on. They need to get drunk in order yeah. to forget or about Or they'll say shit like, I can't watch the game. Can't wait to watch the game to get away from my wife and kids. Yeah. Like, why would I ever want to get away yeah. from my wife and kids? You when know what I mean? That doesn't you, make any sense. When you've done the work on yourself and you bring in, like, that external, like, you have friends and yeah. you're, like, you know, like, your girlfriend, wife, whatever, that's, like, it's all positive. You have a job that you love. When you start having these things that you don't need to escape from anymore – it's like, no, I don't need to, I don't need to escape. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy writing the emails because I love the job and I love keeping it going. Yeah, and exactly. So everything it's fun. About it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I still have a lot to work on, but I mean, this is definitely. Well, we know. all do. Like, as, as long as you're living and breathing, you, everyone's got yeah. shit to work on. And just like jujitsu, it's all about throwing in as many tools as you can because of, like, first and foremost, you do need that like that ability to want it. You need to definitely want to either live a better life or whatever it is. 
Uh, and just like with jujitsu, you can be content with where you're at, but most of us want to grow, grow and get yeah, better. Always, yeah. And within life, it's the same thing. Like you have to a first have like that want to do more and to be a better version of yourself, and then it's just learning techniques, meditation, breathing, uh, jujitsu, any kind of martial art. People that do yoga, and then you just like you know start to recognize oh like when I eat better, I feel better. When I'm around positive people, I feel better. Yeah. And that's it's just why, yeah. that's all it is. It's that's why jujitsu is so huge for people because I feel like they start doing it and then it, it like leads to things like yeah. playing in a, 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 a beer league softball thing leads to a DUI. Yeah. It leads to you getting in fights. It leads to your wife being pissed at you. Jiu-jitsu. I mean, people's, <laughs> people's people still, wives get mad at them. Yeah. They still get mad at them. They're way all the time. They spend all their money on jujitsu. So it becomes, you know, and if they're always hurt or something, it, anything could become unhealthy, right? You have to have balance. Like we always talk about, but um, jujitsu leads to, learning like for me i would have never i would have looked at breath work and be like i don't need that yeah you know what i mean like just simply i would have took one second and seen a guy i'd be like yeah he's breathing good i do that every day yeah. next you know what i mean yeah but now though since i'm in jujitsu and i realize how hard it was to get your brown belt to get your purple belt to get your black belt how hard it is to do a high level competition how hard it is to train on a weekly bit, like it becomes normal for us. But when you think about like, oh, I remember when I sucked at passing. Yeah. Now I'm decent at passing. I remember when I had no leg lock game. Now I can leg lock a lot of people yeah. or at least defend myself against leg locks. So then you go, okay, what else am I not good at? Yeah. Or what, like you said, tools, what else? And that's what I always do. I always think like, especially like I got lower back injuries. I got the back thing. I, you know, I get the ball. I like, okay, what are, again, rolling around on that ball. I would have never, when I was a teenager dude fighting MMA, I would have been like, dude, yeah, I'm going to let me roll around on a ball for 15 minutes yeah. and I could be punching a bag. Freaking idiot. You know, but now when I'm like, oh, okay, what can I fit? What can I add in? Yeah. Like, especially that, like, I'm like, okay, breath work. Okay. We need that. I'm like, damn, who do I know? I'm like, oh shit. I know Joey. That's right. Yeah. I forget. Oh, yeah. And then I saw you getting in all that shit. I'm like, dude, I got to bring them out. And then same thing with the Wim Hof. Like I started doing the cryo lab because Dan opened that. But then I saw Wim Hof and then at first you go, ah, I could never do that. And then you start seeing other people like you got into it. And you start seeing the other guys doing it. And then you look more into it and there's more and more people doing it. And then I'm like, hey, wait, why am I not into this? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I like, I am scared. I am nervous to do it. And I'm, I get anxiety going to the uh, cryo machine. Uh -huh. I get anxiety getting a needle. I get I do. Like I get anxiety doing uh, jiu-jitsu tournaments and like sometimes dude like even when we're coaching me and jm and you know you wouldn't think this about us because guys are like oh those, those dudes have been competing zach's been fighting since he's a kid he's got grace he's flying to japan they got thor they're doing tournaments and, and like even before our tournament i get anxiety i'm like man i hope this goes good yeah i hope this you know what i mean or whatever and i start thinking about it and i'm like fuck i could i could think to myself like dude i could just be teaching kids class and adult class and just be going home and you know not yeah. not worrying about getting lit up on instagram by you know, one of my uh, colleagues or whatever, or like going to Kasai and looking like an ass on stage. But I don't care though. Yeah. I want to look good, but I don't care really anymore what people think. Like I, st I do, but I don't, you know, it's like a weird yeah. mix. And it's just like, dude, I'm just going to, you know, why not do these things that scare the shit out of me? Because I know it's going to make me stronger. You know, yeah. That's what I keep thinking. Like getting in this, like even Kat said, she's nervous. And and I've had a lot of guys that are like our tough purple belts. And they're just like, dude, I'm fucking, I have, for yeah. I have to do this. I have to do this. Because for if not, I'll tell my, I'll just the whole, because I know he ain't going to come around every couple of weeks and do this. Yeah. I got to do it now. And I'm really nervous because I know that if I don't do it, I'm just going to be calling myself a pussy every day. Being like, dude, because every time you see someone do an ice bath, they'll be like, ah yeah. you know what i mean like <laughs> and but what's cool yeah. about it is that as i said because it's difficult for everyone it shows you that like what i love about it is that the breathing i feel gives you an awesome set of tools as far as just dealing with like that day-to-day -day anxiety it's the first thing i do yeah. in the morning and so a lot of times especially if i'm thinking about something that's stressing me out i'll do the breathing and it calms me down but sometimes there are things in life that are fucking scary no matter what yeah. it is but you just got to do it anyway. Yeah. And that's what like the ice bath's there for. No matter how many times I do it, even like when I'm there on Sunday, there's always like a part of me that's like, all right, got to do another ice bath. It's like, it's not a big deal anymore yeah, because yeah. the more you do it, just like competing right. when you, when you first compete, it's a thing you dwell on all week. Yeah. And then it becomes, okay, it's just like the day of you're nervous, you feel it. Uh, but like the feeling never goes away. No matter how many times you compete, you always get nervous. Still, yeah. But it's, it's you it's recognize, less. oh, it's less, but you also handle it better. Yeah, and you can control it. Yeah, yeah, it's like, okay, like, I feel nervous, but you're doing your warm-ups, you're doing everything. 
regardless of how nervous you are. When so, someone touches you, you're going to do what you do. Yeah. You know what I mean, if and, you put the work in. And then the ice bath is the exact same thing. Like, no matter how many times you do it, you're always going to get nervous beforehand, and it's always going to be cold, and it's going to kind of simulate that exact same physiology as fear every time you get in, right? You notice that when you're cold and afraid, it's the same physiology. The shoulders come up. Yeah. The breathing starts to become that like, really shallow. And so learning to breathe and stay calm within that ice bath Gives you extra tools as far nice. as learning to breathe and stay calm in any kind of stressful, scary situation in life. Yeah, I uh, feel like, uh, not to interrupt, but I yeah. feel like this happens like a couple times when I got like pretty, not seriously injured, but when I did injure myself or I was having like a really, really bad stomach uh, flu, I noticed this about when I, or when I have like, a, when I get like a really bad migraine, I noticed the first thing I do is I, the first thing that's affected is the way I breathe. Uh -huh. Like I'll breathe, but like, like if I'm thr like if I was throwing up, yeah, I just start, yeah, like trying to Shall control yeah. my own breathing. Like I, I don't realize I'm doing it, but then I'm like, oh, okay. And then what happens is I'm like, my head or like let's say my tooth or when I fucked up my wrist really bad. Like I just remember being like, because I was just every breath I concentrated on the breath as opposed to concentrating on yeah my wrist is dangling by yeah. thread. You know what I mean? Now I'm so yeah, I notice that. Anchor. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's why I'm, I'm definitely, uh, like I said, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do it for sure. And then even, you know, I learned a little bit when with Marcelo out at that thing and um, out at the LA Jiu Jitsu Club. And I was like, dude, we got to just, you know, we got to get more into this. I got to see a couple more people do it. And then obviously you see Hickson and you're like, yeah. all right, I got to do this, dude. Yeah. I have to do it. And I've done some cold stuff like the cryo. And then I always liked, I jumped in a pool at the LA Jiu Jitsu Club, even though it only lasted like 10 seconds. <laughs> and then I also would always go like when we would do like a week training at, out at HQ and we would train twice a day, every day by Wednesday, you know, yeah. after that Wednesday morning session, you're like, dude, just run. I just run, jump in the ocean, even yeah. though it was freezing. And then you'd come out, like, for some odd reason, you'd be like, wow, I don't, my shins aren't bruised as fuck anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, how did that happen? Like, for whatever reason, it's just like, well, so I'm also helping the ice, hoping the ice bath helps with my, uh, you know, inflammation. That's you know what, what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. great for inflammation. And we'll go into it, like, in the seminar of, as far as, like, you know, as it activates different parts of your nervous system, and that's why it... Uh, gives you all those anti-inflammatory proteins. Nice. Well, yeah, we'll definitely. You do the that. saunas at all too? Or? Yeah, I do saunas. I do, yeah. like there's like different spas I go to, and I also have one in my gym that I go to. Nice. Yeah, I just I've been doing that for a long time too. I really like to sit in a sauna. I don't know like if I should be doing like a routine or something, but I would just go in for like ten minutes, come out, and which I think is in. good. Yeah, yeah, I'm not like uh, up to date with all like the science of it, but I do know that it does provide like, like the heat shock. Yeah, something and like all that. that. I just heard Doctor Rhonda Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> I know of it because of uh, Joe Rogan, and I yeah. also like taking it to the extreme. I've done uh, uh, sweat lodges before. I've heard of that. It's yeah, fucking, it's intense. That's probably being crazy. in there for like three hours. It's not quite as hot as a sauna, but it's hot. It's still, and sweat, like, and yeah, it's, and you gotta. I'm sure you it's gotta, over a long duration. Yeah, you gotta control yourself in that. Yeah, like I freak and out. Like, breathing, yeah. 100. percent That's all it is. It's, yeah, and you see too, people are not used to those saunas. They get in there and they're like trying to cut weight, and they're like, oh, <laughs> every ten. Yeah. Then you're leaving every three minutes. Yeah, and I'm in there like, bro, you gotta stay in yeah. to lose weight. You know, people are funny like that. But believe me, well, the first time I ever did a sauna, I walked in. The, I opened the door and walked in. And I was like, oh, hell no. Yeah. And now I love it, though. So, you yeah. know, I mean, you get used to shit. And but, um, that's another thing is that you can get used to anything. Yeah. You could, whatever it is. Like, I remember when I was start, first going to, like, the gym gym. Like, it was intimidating for me to go in and lift, lift weights. Because yeah, yeah. all these, everyone's got muscles. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, I started doing it. And then it became less intimidating until it's just like, oh, it's what I do. Same yeah, thing yeah. with jujitsu, and same thing with not even just doing like the Wim Hof method and getting into ice baths, but also teaching it and consistently doing seminars, speaking for three plus hours in front of large groups of people. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. For, but you like, get used to it. it yeah. You get used to it. Five years ago, the concept of public speaking in general was a terrifying thing for me. Uh, but now it's just, it's normal. Yeah, You that, can make anything that you're scared of normal. That's why I still keep, people ask me, like, they're like, you don't have anything to prove. Why do you keep competing? Like, because some people don't want to look like, uh, uh, look like they suck online because if you get beat, like people be like, Ugh. Yeah. But like, honestly, like one of the reasons why I do it is to keep myself in that frame of mind where like someone could walk in my school and just try to, you know, what if they come in and try to kick my ass? Yeah. Like jujitsu wise, I want to be competition level yeah. all the time where I could just, if someone was like, yo, Zach, step out of the crowd onto the mat and face a guy that obviously I'm not going to go out there and fight, 
you know, Nicky Ryan. Like, I'm sure I could handle my own against him. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? He's a kid, but um, he's smoking everybody. Yeah. But, like, th he's the best. But I'm saying, at the honestly, him, you know, and Gio, like, I could, I, you know, I'm sure I would do okay. Like, I faced a lot of guys that they faced. But if, if someone was like, yo, like, even when I get older, like, I'm still going to do, you know, like, I've talked about retiring and stuff, but I'll still do, when I say retire, I mean, I'm not going to do big super fights. Yeah. You know, I'll fight guys my own age at IBJJFs and stuff, and I want to be... Like if someone's like, yo, Zach's 40 years old and he's a black belt, put him up against another 40-year-old that's yeah. a black belt. I bet I'll whoop his ass, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Unless they're the best guy. You know what I mean? Like, And that's what I want to be able to do. That's one of the reasons why I still compete. So it keeps me in the in the game. And like I can tell my students too, like, you know, I don't, I didn't ever want to be the guy that didn't do it. You yeah. know what I mean? So like whatever it is, even though I'm scared, I'll usually volunteer. Like, you know, when a lot of people weren't competing, I started fighting just to – because I used to fight. I didn't oh. want to fight. You know, that was not in my mind. Like, yo, let's go back and fight. Like, I'm not going to go to, I wasn't planning on going to UFC, but I figured, listen, if I go out there and show these guys that I don't give a fuck and I'm just going to, I'm just going to go out there and take shots uh -huh. and see what happens. Other guys will think that too. And it did. It hyped everybody up and more people got into it and they're like, damn, if Zach could do it. I roll with Zach all the time. I could do it too, you know? And like, start, you know, building the school. And that's one of the, I just felt like that's how I had to do it. Like I had to put myself in the situation where I got used to doing these scary things. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, dude, we're almost 50 minutes and uh, we got to get going or I'm going to be late for class. Oh shit. Um, we but, don't uh, want that. Um, yeah, no, but dude, thank you so much for doing this. We could probably still keep talking, but uh, is there any, anything you want to say at the end just to like, um, put out there or well, promote I don't anything. I was about to say, like, I don't know if uh, this is going to go out before the seminar Sunday. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you guys, if you didn't go, you missed an amazing seminar. Yeah. Everyone loved it. It was amazing. Um, other than that, I guess I'll give a shout out to my sponsors, uh, Show Your Roll. Nice. Uh, and that's about it. What about um, also to, uh, so if, let's say they missed this one, um, where else can they find you? Like Instagram, obviously, right? Oh, yeah. My Instagram, uh, Joey House, H-A-U-S-S. -S, it's one word. So J-O-E-Y-H-A-U-S-S. -S. Uh, and then Facebook, it's the same, but it's two words. Or you can find me at joeyhouse.com. And I'll be posting all the upcoming seminars and everything like that oh, nice. on that website. Dude, that's awesome. And then also, too, isn't there like a Wim Hof workshop met, uh, thing? Like, let's say if you're looking for the Wim Hof workshop in your area. Yeah, yeah. You so then you go to Bumble Fox, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to Wim Hof, uh, I think it's just Wim Hof Method.com and or just Google Wim Hof Method. It'll show up. And yeah, it'll has all the instructors in your area and you'll be able to find one close to you. Nice. Awesome, man. Yeah, if uh dude, thank you again for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I really want to try to get more guests on and stuff and uh I'm going to so once I figure out, I keep saying this, but once I figure out how to take phone calls, uh we'll have them back on and then we'll talk about how everything went and then I'll let you guys know um you know how I did and everything and if you know you guys want to try it too. So cuz a lot of people were asking about it and um also too uh, was I going to say something else? Oh yeah. Next week, I probably try to get one of these in Monday or Tuesday and then these will both probably come out next week. Cause, uh, I'll be in Japan. We're leaving for Japan oh, on Wednesday. Yeah. So when we come back, um, I'm pumped and, uh, I won't have time to record a commercial for this. So shout out to my sponsor, Fuji. If you want to buy anything from Fuji, just use the promo code finishers. You could pretty much go to any goddamn jujitsu site and just put in the promo code finishers and see if it works. <laughs> uh, cause there's a bunch that do. So, uh, promo code finishers, finishers, everything. Thank you, Joey. Um, Thank shout you. out to the Machotomy and, uh, the Wim Hof method. And, uh, yeah, man, we'll, uh, LA Jiu -Jitsu Club. see you guys soon. Peace. What's up, guys? Zach here from the Finishers Podcast and from this podcast, Zach's Corner Podcast. And uh, this podcast is brought to you by our sponsor, The Grappler's Guide 3.0. Just go to thegrapplersguide.com, check it out. Actually, instead of going to thegrapplersguide.com, you can go to uh, me on Instagram at Zach Maslany. Click the link in my bio. Under there, there'll be a spot that says Grappler's Guide. If you click that link and go to the Grappler's Guide, you can get uh, 30% I've used the promo code finishers too. You can you you can uh, get 30% off a lifetime membership and I know there's some other deals with that too. So check out the grapplers guide. It's probably the largest grappling website that there is. Jason Scully, shout out to him. We filmed a bunch of videos on there. So if you're looking for the 10 planet warmups, they're on there. If you're looking for, uh, if you're like, dude, my open guard sucks ass. I need to figure some shit out. They're going to give you some ideas right there. Back attacks program, turtle and crucifix program, truck program, arm lock series. 
Challenge. If you do gi for some odd reason, they got shit on there. If you're like trying to wrist lock people and piss them off, they got that on there. They also have what I really like is the outside experts. Not only do you get our stuff, but you get Riley Bodycomb, Dan Colville, Aaron Millam, Craig Jones, Wilson Hayes, Travis Stevens. You want to get your judo up. We're going to be down there. Lachlan Giles. If you want to get your guillotine up, learn from Josh Hinger. So check out the Grappler's Guide. Use the promo code finishers. Or like I said, go to Instagram, click the link in my bio, and then uh, click where it says Grappler's Guide. Use the promo code finishers and you're good to go. Get your learn on, motherfucker. Hey, everybody. This is Paul Maslany, Zach's little brother. I am Zach's podcast producer for Zach's Corner. I produce podcasts for multiple shows. Anyone who's interested in starting their own podcast, producing a podcast, they need a podcast producer, they need someone to help them with audio for anything. I do a little bit of video production with it. We can get audio tracks and stuff up onto YouTube. You know, there's one-time deals. We could do hourly rates. I have packages. They're all custom built depending on what you want and what you need. I can help with one episode. I can help sign on for a whole season. It's whatever you're looking for. Maybe you just want me to show you how to do the basics and help you launch your podcast then you can take over and do everything on your own. Any of you who want to make recording a podcast a priority, I can show you how to do it yourself, help you get started. I could help you run it and produce it. If you want a professional quality podcast, I can get it up. I can get it online. Do your show notes. I can convert it to YouTube. I can get it on multiple platforms. There's other services are available as well. Reference the show notes for my email address to contact me 